On today's Go, we're going Western. Hello, welcome to a special horse edition of Go. I'm Vanessa Ibera, and on today's show, we're coming to you from Adventures on Horseback here in beautiful Pemberton to find out what this trail riding attraction is all about. Now, speaking of animals, on today's show, we're also heading to Squamish to get your thoughts on a wolf accommodation coming to town. We'll head up to Whistler for part four of my skiing series and a lot more, so stay tuned. But first, enough talking. Let's get to it and meet the man behind me, otherwise known as Cowboy Bob. For some, it's a chore. I feed first thing in the morning, usually in about four in the evening. For Bob Menzel, otherwise known as Cowboy Bob, it's an act of love. There's worse things you could be doing, like sitting in an office or something. This is what keeps me fit. It's a connection that's there, and it's just... It's hard to explain. It's just, I guess they make you feel good. Part of that connection could be that horses have run in Bob's family for well over a thousand years. I can trace them back to the Crusades. It's my fifth or sixth birthday. That was the first one I could call my own. And his love of horses has only grown from there. Today, when Bob and his wife Susan aren't away competing, she is a barrel racer, he the occasional team roper, the lifelong Pembertonian looks after over 40 horses here at their ranch, with these four-legged beauties quickly becoming their other children. They're all from here. We raised them all from babies. And their mothers and grandmothers are all raised here in Pemberton. I don't really have a total favorite. They're all pretty close. This one here, this honey horse, she can take even two-year-olds out on trail rides. The babe's my, the one I ride all the time. She's quite enjoyable to ride, hard to catch. Hey, babe. You know, that was an easy one today. For the past 30 years, Bob has also been leading an Adventures on Horseback trail riding tour where he takes visitors out on his horses to explore the beautiful valley in what was once Pemberton's only mode of transportation. I have people that have been coming for 15, 20 years just because they enjoy riding on horses. It's just not a nose to tail ride. We go for runs, we get a group of people that are experienced and we just ride like it's your own horse. These guys are all trained as saddle horses before they're ever put on the trail ride. So everyone is an individual. They don't think as a group. And while this guide has now spent a good portion of his life giving newbies a taste of the Western world, it's this special bond between man and horse that only true horse lovers can understand. When we start to school them and train them, they're just, just understanding them. And I guess it's, there's a lot of people don't understand the horse. A lot of people may get rough with them or whatever. I don't know if I've ever been rough with a horse. As for this cowboy, he'll continue to travel down the only path in life he's ever known or ever will know. It'll still be the horse thing regardless of where I am. Okay, next we're heading down to Squamish. As one of the best rock climbing destinations in the world, it's no surprise the city continues to attract some of the best athletes in the sport, including this next fierce female, who just so happens to be one of Canada's best. If hands could talk, the stories Thomasinas would tell. In 2001, I start bouldering in Squamish, and that same year, I start going to the States for climbing, to Bishop, California, and in Texas, and randomly, I would go to Europe if I had enough money. <laughs> I got really passionate about climbing, and it was all I wanted to do and think about. And in the last 15 years, this new fee native's professional climbing career has only gone up. Along with competing in numerous World Cups, the athlete was also the first Canadian woman to successfully boulder V10, 11, and 12 rock formations, the highest grade levels in the sport. Bouldering is, it's just climbing on rock itself, so there's no gear, no rope. And I'm outside, I'm on my own timing, I'm figuring out at my own speed, and 
It's fresh air, it's beautiful usually, but competitions have a different aspect that attract me. Like they're pretty like high pressure. You have to like really work on your mental strategies to stay relaxed and to be calm. Lucky for Thomasina, she's got these hands to help keep her steady. She's been climbing ever since she's been born. For a large majority of the last decade, nine-year-old Cedar has been traveling alongside her mom to the States and Europe for competitions, which is why it isn't surprising she's quickly following in her footsteps. I never really pushed her into it ever, but she just did it and it came natural to her. She likes rope climbing actually, so I'll delay her if she wants to rope climb and she'll boulder too. With this shy yet fearless climber quickly becoming her mom's number one trainer and fan. If I'm at a climb and I don't think I can do it and I'm, I'm saying, oh, I can't do this too hard, she'll like look up at me and she'll be like, no, mama, you, you say that all the time, you can do it, you can do it. So I think this is something that we mutually feed off. They're in here a lot just to, to climb, to stretch, to, and we're friends as well, so hanging out. It's such a well-rounded sport. You can get into it alone with bouldering, you can get into it with a, with a partner. You can continue to be challenged for a long time. There's no cap on what's possible in climbing. With Squamish being one of the top rock climbing destinations in the world, residents of all ages and expert levels continue to try their hand at the sport. It's even one step closer to becoming an Olympic sport. However, for Thomasina, her main goal for it has remained the same since day one. To not lose the connection that climbing can bring to other people, other climbers, and also to the environment, like being outside, that's what I hope. In Squamish, I'm Vanessa Ibera for Go On Chalk TV. The gym where that story was shot is called a Ground Up Climbing Center. It's recently opened in Squamish, and it's pretty cool if you're into rock climbing. You can rock climb, also do bouldering, and they also offer a coffee shop where you can refuel afterwards. So check it out. The website is uh, climbgroundup.com. Well, stick around, because after the break, we're going to introduce you to one of these horses here who's quite the hot shot here at the ranch. And later on, I just may go for a ride myself. So stick with us. Also after the break, that could be really, really cool. Doesn't really impact me any way positively. We get your thoughts on an indoor water park that just may be coming to Squamish. Welcome back from the break. Uh, as we mentioned, yeah, it's a horse edition of Go This Week. We're here at Adventures on Horseback in Pemberton, and Cowboy Bob is joining me once again with his friend here. Um, let's talk about the start, Bob. Uh, you got so many horses, as we saw in this story. This is Hot Shot, Hot Shot quite the name. Yeah. Barrel horse, um, been twice world champion, once Canadian champion in wow. Senior Pro Rodeo. Uh, what makes a horse a good horse when it comes to the trail riding? Obviously, you know, you mentioned some are a bit mm -hmm. wild when they come here. You have to let them go. What's the temperament well, you're looking for? You know, we, <laughs> want a, we want a horse that doesn't spook and easy to train in school. And certain horses have certain characteristics, and we try to keep the ones with lots of brains. And Yeah. Well, Hotshot leads the tour, as you were saying, yeah. so obviously quite the leader. Uh, let's talk about the tours you do offer here. I was saying it's so cool. I'm from Cloverdale initially, so I love horses and yeah. I feel at home here. And it's so cool, it's yeah. 20 minutes outside of Whistler, but. We leave from here and we do a two hour tour, it's our main tour. We, we go out towards the base of Mount Curry, cross the Pemberton Creek and do a, a loop and through the bears and whatever other animals, deer and whatever you might see that day and come back to here. And it takes approximately two hours unless uh, depending on uh, you know, depending on the rider's ability, sometimes it's an hour and a half. But we've got a fair bit of running in there. So, yeah. yeah, that's cool. You customize each tour. Yeah, every you know, as soon as we get out and leave the yard, we're starting to customize because we're seeing what what we have. You know, we can we take five, six year olds sometimes. But. Well, we'll see how we do uh, later on the show. I'm going to attempt to ride, babe. Your horse. Uh, yeah. You're mentioning Bob, and you'll take out Hot Shot, so it sh should be good. While it may be serene here at Bob's Ranch, turns out in Squamish there's a little debate brewing. And no, it isn't LNG. But as we find out this next story, it did involve me suiting up in a rather ridiculous tubing outfit. Ah, there's nothing like an afternoon sail down the Namquam. What? 
Okay, maybe it's a little too cold for tubing, but fear not, Squamites. Turns out our city may be getting a water park resort where, get this, you may be able to go tubing year round. They came to me ooh, probably last, late last spring, just sort of with the concept of we're thinking about Squamish of doing this and we're looking at pieces of land. They being the Jim Pattison Group, who is toying with the idea of building a Great Wolf Lodge just north of downtown. The hotel resort chain would include an indoor water park with water slides and plenty of areas for tubing, as well fun character-themed restaurants. I'd never been to one, so I looked it up online. I went, okay, not my thing, but um, very, very popular, obviously. Of course, there's a, a ton of jobs with this, so you have to weigh all those things with the pros and cons. As you saw from the pictures, Great Wolf Lodge markets itself as being a kid-friendly place, which is good news since there's thousands of families here in Squamish and thousands of families also visit the city, which will help create over 400 jobs according to the mayor. But the big question is, what does the community think about it? I think I was definitely against it. Big establishments are sometimes kind of scary for small little cozy towns, but I mean if it will bring in a lot of employment, I think that could be really, really cool. As long as residents would be able to use the facilities, that would be a nice thing to have in Squamish. It seems kind of weird. Squamish is the outdoor capital of Canada, so the proposal for a proposal for a huge indoor water park seems kind of um, not really aligned with where Squamish is headed into the future. The fact that it will have some sort of accommodation associated with it, that could be good for me. I have a business that serves uh, hotels and so on. I do massage, mobile massage. So I guess some more people coming and staying over and wanting to, you know, relax, have a good time, could be good for me. This father of two is also giving a thumbs up to the water park, as long as Sea to Sky families are invited to use it. From what I've heard, Great Wolf Lodge doesn't really offer that. It's part of their branding, maybe they you have to stay there in order to take advantage of the uh, awesome slides. So, you know, so if it, that's the case, it doesn't really impact me any way positively. There's still lots of things that we need to work through. With any rezoning and OCP amendment, there's always public uh, hearings and public input, and they'll have to do traffic analysis and highway street frontage analysis. And then the community has to decide if this is something they'd like to see and bring that input to council. As you heard, squamates are still plenty divided on the topic. For now, Council is simply focused on hearing your input before they make any decisions on how viable a water park is here in Squamish, especially in the winter months. But how cold really can January water be, right? Ah! One second thought. Great Wolf Lodge has 10 accommodations in the States and they also have one here in Canada. It's uh, east of us in Niagara Falls. So uh, according to council right now, there's no set date for a public consultation, but still we want to keep the conversation going. So let us know, what are your thoughts? Should it come to Squamish or not? You can reach out to us on Twitter and on Facebook. Just visit the link on the bottom of the screen there. Okay, well staying in Squamish, if you've driven south on Highway 99, you've likely gone past Meg's 99 restaurant just as you're leaving town. Yes, it's a bright building with a chicken mascot. But as we find out this next story, like many things in life, there's more to this restaurant than meets the eye. From the highway, it looks like any other fried chicken stop. But peer a little closer and you'll discover one of Squamish's best gems. Two fish tacos down? Yeah. First one coming up, taco beef. We got four different kinds of meat here. We got a red chili beef, a taco beef, uh, a rotisserie chicken, and an ancho pork. Here inside Meg's 99 Kitchen, it's a Mexican mania. We're serving about 600 burritos during the summer, about on average, yeah. So that's wild. All right, let's throw some burritos, people. Luckily for this co owner, wild is what he thrives off of. For 20 years, Aaron Lawton traveled around the world working as a chef in hotels, oil rig camps, and fine dining restaurants. I was over in the UK, over in Australia, uh, in Europe. The Sea to Sky are suddenly seeing an opportunity in Squamish three years ago. If you look in Vancouver, I mean, tacos have been going strong for years and there's just, it's not much for different kind of eats here in Squamish. We just kind of had the inspiration to do really good, honest food here and, you know, change the face of kind of what fast food is. While the restaurant does still serve its classic fried chicken, it's its fresh fusion tacos and burritos that has quickly made it one of the busiest spots in town. I come here 
maybe once a week. It's really good. Fresh, homemade, tasty. I'm a chef myself, so you know it's awesome just to pick Aaron's brain, see what he's doing next. He's always doing really cool specials like this one. Lived all over the South, so I'm pretty used to like fried chicken and Tex-Mex. So when I came here and tried Aaron's, he's really doing, doing good. He's got it going on. And then there's the decor. When I think of the decor here, I think of Mexico. I think of bright buildings, huge colors, and we just kind of run with that. I think this is all in Aaron's head, like what he would draw a cartoon or imagine something to be, I think this is a replica of his imagination. Along with its bold decor, Meg's cheeky signs have also become a fan favorite. These ones poking fun at rapper Drake and the song Big Papa are just some of the sayings getting a quick laugh from highway drivers. It's really easy for people to forget a restaurant. You really got to push and, you know, always be jumping boundaries. With Megs also used to film part of the indie movie Mouthworm in 2015, there's no telling what will come next for this bright building and now chain. Sky's the limit. Let's go. <laughs> to be doing well and getting so much support from everybody, you know, it's just, yeah, it's a dream come true. The short film Mouthworm that was filmed there at Meg's, it premiered at last year's Heavy Hitting Horror Fest in Whistler, which is also returning this year once again for its 14th year. It happens uh, October 30th, so filmmakers, get moving on it. Bob, I'm here with uh, Babe, who was born here, pretty cool, she's yeah. one of your horses, obviously. Uh, what's the main thing to kind of check before we start riding her? Well, I'm going to check the girth, and then we're going to adjust uh Adjust the uh, stirrup length for you. Is this the usual setup for each horse? What they're what they're yeah, outfitted with? Exactly. Yeah, and then we try and pick the horse suitable for the rider. We get a lot of different riders, so obviously, you know, if some say they can ride and can't, and some say they can't and they're very good <laughs> riders. You can you tell know, instantly if it, someone's been on a horse I, or not. By the time they put their foot in the stirrup, I know. Their abilities usually. I think I've been on a horse once in my life, which is well, so embarrassing. The horse will know right away. <laughs> my horses pick out the non riders right oh, away. Oh no. You get on her though, she's good. One foot up here and grab hold of that and swing right over top of the <sighs> horse. Awesome. Huh. Toes out, heels down when you ride. This is a basically working as a shock absorber. Oh, gotcha. Because you're a little bit of pressure on your on your ankles. Okay. And it you don't want to push yourself out of the saddle, but you want to. Just lift a little Keep weight. Keep the weight of my heels, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you're feeling the horse's motion through your feet and you're absorbing it in your ankles. Okay. This horse is broke to neck range, so you touch lightly on the, the right, to yeah. the right to go to the right, and it's just like the car, and this okay. side to go it's to a the left. Gentle nudge, right? I think you're ready for a ride, Vanessa, so we'll, we'll grab hot shot and I will we'll take you for a little trip here. All right, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> Give a little kick. Come on, kick. I, I flip that kick. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. I'd say my attempt at horseback riding was pretty chill compared to my recent ski lesson. Who knew stopping on skis was so hard? Regardless, let's head up to Whistler Mountain to check out the fun for part four of my Learn to Ski series. All right, George, so we're heading up the mountain once again for my third lesson. You've seen the tapes, how have I done so far? I think you're pretty amazing, actually. You've done pretty well. So I think for our lesson today, maybe we'll start once again on the magic carpet. Every year, thousands of people flock here to Whistler Mountain's Learning Center to learn to ski, with 2015 their best year yet. We could have used probably another 100 or 200 instructors. We just had that many people wanting to take lessons but you won't hear this pro of the year complaining. I love skiing, I love people, yeah, it's fun. Really a lot of fun, very satisfying. Today I start my lesson off practicing basic turns one more time. Confidence in check, it's time for the chairlift. Okay, right up to the green line. You're gonna take your poles in the middle and look to the outside and take that bar in your hand when the chair comes so you don't get hit in the bum with it. Very good. Okay. Super. Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now just enjoy the view. And now we relax. So where are we heading up to here? This is a green run or what's... This is a green run. This is a specific teaching area here. It's pretty easy. And surprisingly, so was getting off the chairlift. Good. Keep right. forward. Super. <laughs> Super. That wasn't too bad. 
I like the scream, that's good. <laughs> now that we're over that hurdle, it's time to officially start our lesson. Look down, turn the left leg, squeeze the snow. We kind of go on an outline, we have like five, five principles. Uh, the first one is the way we stand. We like to keep a nice loose stance. The other thing we try to do is turning with the lower body. It's super, really nice, okay, up. George making me hold my poles directly in front of me to help stabilize my upper body. Super, nice, really good. Next, it's on to edging. This skill requires putting your weight on the downhill ski in order to maintain balance during a turn. It's a little more similar to a car where you turn the steering wheel and the car leans on the outside tires. It doesn't lift up and go on the inside tires. So there's more stability there. And if you don't do it well, this happens. Up. Ah! It's very important is to learn how to control our intuition because skiing is not always intuitive. It's very counterintuitive, leaning on the outside of a turn. And that's something that people have a little bit of trouble with. Has the intuition and the panic button. Going. Intuition's pretty good. Pretty I, feel good like, eh? I feel like I'm overthinking too much. That's probably my problem. Yeah, like, so you gotta relax a little more. You haven't fallen down yet. I haven't, I know. No, We're gonna jinx ourselves. Great. Yes, we are. No! Slow down, go back up. I can't. Sit down, sit down, no! sit down. <laughs> Boy, you almost got the trees that too. That's a pretty good fall. <laughs> Falling comes, it, you know, it comes. That's it. Sometimes I fall. You still have a couple of things to work on. You're a little bit too upright sometimes. I would get you a little bit more forward. You're finishing your turns pretty well. And with that, it's time to finally call it a day. But not without one last random exercise from this forever young skier. You know what I do? I like to have fun. I like to have a race. A race? race? You know All right, race? pop off the day. Okay, I need to learn to stop screaming on lessons, but regardless, it was so much fun. So thanks again to uh, George for uh, teaching me and uh, be sure to stay tuned to our next show where I wrap up my final lesson with George and also stay tuned to one after that. That's the best one. We're going to teach all about apres, so you don't want to miss that as well. Well, that wraps up our show coming to you from Adventures on Horseback here in Pemberton. If you want to check out their tours, they're offered again year round. Uh, just visit the link on the bottom of your screen. And as always, if you have any story ideas, maybe another horse story or another uh, animal story we should know about, you can uh, email us at sea sky at sjrb.ca. Until next time, I'm Vanessa Ivera.